Hello everyone, it's Alex coming to you from my usual post-workout position because somehow that's when I'm you know while I'm working out I'm getting all these thoughts and ideas and then I go okay let's just come online and share so uh, this week has been for me a, a well, I don't even know what day it is. Oh no, it's only Tuesday. Well, yeah, the last few days have been, I've been busy speaking to a lot of you, a lot of, you know, people who follow me, who are interested in the new group coaching. Hi, Vanessa. Or, you know, one-on-one -on -one work. Um, I was I was booked out until basically my my next opening is from middle of October. And so for a while I wasn't really, you know, I didn't even really get to all of the application because applications because since last year it's just been, you know, super, super busy, a lot of you reaching out. And so I just wanted to share a little bit of what I'm what I'm seeing, what I'm learning, because I love speaking to to you because I'm always learning, you know, by listening I learn what is going on in the world because we're all holographic reflections, right? And that's why a lot of times when things are going on with me, I know that if I'm going through it, well, there must be a lot of other people who are going through it as well. And vice versa, when I hear of others. And so, you know, a couple things. First of all, what I've been witnessing really since last year already is that there seems to be a lot more um, almost like old conditions coming up, you know, whether it's Lyme, chronic fatigue, candida, and, you know, these aren't even conditions, you know, they're, they're not root causes, they're not true root causes, EVB, whatever we're talking about, SIBO, you know, all these things, they're not even really root causes. Because the root cause beneath what looks like the root cause is, um, you know, toxicity. Well, toxicity and degeneration due to toxicity. And what I mean by that, it's, it's not just physical toxicity. And this is so, so, so important to understand. Because literally... You know, I'm trying to scan in my mind. I mean, at least 80% of you, probably more, but 80% of you that I speak to, you know, you come to me with a health issue, typically something that you've been working on for several years with practitioners, functional medicine doctors, you know, all kinds but not in a real systematic way, oftentimes, or, you know, in a sense, too weak, or focusing just on supplements. But the biggest piece missing, well, there's two big pieces missing, but the, the number one big piece missing that I see is that nobody really is telling you that you need to also address the emotional part it's crucial and this is what I've witnessed you know for my own healing journey but also with all of my clients every single one of my clients that I worked with I've seen at some point and sometimes we're not aware of it initially you know we think oh it's just physical and if I sort out the physical my life will either go back which is not the case or I'll just get all better and it's it's just not the case and the reason being because nothing is ever just physical yes you may have you know a lab report or a, a test report of some sort that tells us that you've got Lyme disease that you've got Hashimoto's that you've got you know whatever your diagnosis is cancer for that matter it's never just that it's never ever just that certainly not with any person that I've worked with 
it's never been just physical it's always been also a big component of the healing journey has always been emotional psycho emotional psycho spiritual and the hardest bit of this emotion of the emotional part is getting to the deeper layers of trauma and again you know i only know this for my own journey getting to the deeper deepest layers of tra of original trauma so there's you know like what we call shadow work and it's important you know like i i'm not poo-pooing anything like every single component of the work is important and has its place but when we talk shadow work a lot of times you know we say well we address the seeming shadows which is kind of actually quite a not a nice word because we have all had to had to we all had to build a personality that was able to protect and cope with, was able to protect our most precious being essence, our truest essence, and had to cope with the reality that we grew up in, you know? And when I say this, it's not that, um, you know, because some of you may think, oh, but you know, my, my upbringing wasn't so bad. I didn't have it so bad, like, you know, whatever that means. And this was me and this was, you know, many of my clients, like, we tend to minimize our traumas. It's be and why? Because we grew up with them. So we have no, we had to normalize them. You know, and I also want to be clear when I talk about these original traumas and they're nobody's fault. They're not our parents' fault. They're not the fault of, you know, those that inflicted those traumas. I mean, yes, they are responsible ultimately and they're not condoned in a sense, but they and whoever inflicted those traumas you know everybody just did the best they could and when we really start to understand the you know the deeper meaning of what i'm saying we realize well the whole world is traumatized we're all traumatized and that's why we perpetuate trauma you know and of course then there is big impactful trauma that really basically rips us apart and makes us split completely so that yeah it may look like you're here but actually who's here is the you that you had to create in order to cope with reality and you know i would say that is to a great extent the truth for most people no blame no shame it's just it's that's reality we had to and so my point being that you know there's the personality that we created but then underneath that personality there are parts of us that typically are six months old two years old five years old eight years old basically pre-verbal you know like as, a, as an as an eight-year-old even as a 11 12 year old really you can't verbalize and understand like what really went on or what really is going on in your life like you're still too little you're you're in it and by default you need to make mom and dad or whoever you know your family members into good people because you live with them and so anything that they do to you no fault to them becomes your fault becomes your badness that is how we have all internalized it as children it's just what we do 
our parents did it, our grandparents did it, we did it. So, you know, it, it, it's so easy when I speak about these things to get confused and to go, oh, you know, but whatever, like my parents weren't so bad or, you know, it's not their fault or, and, and, and again, to minimize. But I'm sharing this because it's what I see across the board. When we look at people that are not healing, even though they're doing a lot of the right things, you know, when I have a phone call with you guys, with, you know, such people, inevitably we always hit on the point that, oh, wait, there's unaddressed trauma that is frozen frozen within and that therefore you know can't even be addressed because there's frozen parts within you so this is a really really important component of the healing journey and you know not just for something as serious as cancer or EVB or you know whatever but even for seemingly simple things like for example constipation so you know just to take the example of constipation I I have clients who you know they're severely constipated even though when you look on paper you know what they're eating seems perfectly fine um, they're getting some movement, they're doing some breath work, they're meditating, their food choices are kind of impeccable, really. And yet somehow they can't get over their constipation issues. So what happens? You know, are we gonna give those people more bowel movement formulas? You know, that's where the body's intelligence really comes in and says you know what I'm not feeling safe to let go I'm not feeling safe to open up and to be in flow because of my trauma because there's these parts within me that are locked at two years old at six months old whatever age but little and those parts they're still terrified of life because they haven't grown so yes there's an adult there's an adult body but the little parts are still frozen they're still there fearful of life and that is what's locked so often for many of us me included you know I've I've been through that and in some ways you know just coming out of a deep round of resolution you know another because <laughs> there's always another and you always think it's the last um, yeah sure you know there's there's a the, yes and sometimes it resolves and then we and then we you know a year later or five years later we're back seemingly stuck and we go, I don't understand what's happening. You know, what I was doing was working. It was all perfect. And then what's the first thing that we do? We blame ourselves. We go, oh, you know, where have I gone wrong? What have I done? Uh, you know, there's self-blame. Instead of understanding that, no, sometimes we revisit things, I would say every time, we revisit things in layers. There's another layer of healing oftentimes about around the very same subject that needs to be completed and so we will revisit old health issues old traumas that they need to be resolved and so this is what I'm seeing is happening a lot but the reason for that the deeper reason for this is because and I've talked about this before because the world right now you know is in trauma there is a the a trauma has been has occurred and that then triggers old traumas that haven't been fully resolved and addressed and you know the reality is that for most of us 
we have it best address the first layer with shadow work but then there's deeper foundational layers that are so vulnerable so painful to go there you know that it's like okay i've done those big chunks and those were bad enough those are hard enough but i did it and i've rebuilt myself from that but now the thought of going there it it feels like death you know it it feels like absolute death why because the little ones that have been frozen there that's how they experience that reality you know they re-experience the trauma so it's a very very delicate space and I would say the most important part of healing that he healing original trauma is that you need to feel 100% safe there needs to be no question um, in fact when you work with somebody on that not only do you need to feel safe I almost want to say you need to feel like safe calm and neutral because if you feel excitement you know and you're you're kind of going into the upper chakras of like oh yeah I'm gonna bust through this and great you know and I'm, I'm gonna be all good that's when you know you're you're bypassing stuff and and you're you're going towards illusion Whereas when, you know, and this is just my take it or leave it, but my experience is when it just feels good and sobering, maybe a little bit intimidating because yes, you know, it definitely, it's, it's such delicate work. And the only way to do it is you need to go back to feel those original wounds because if you can't feel it, you can't heal it. You know it's not something that you can think you can you know you can think it you can intellectualize it and you can go yeah no this thing happened to me and you know I've I've worked through it I'm I'm totally fine I've given it its rightful place but if it's still if it's still causing you the need to set boundaries the need to protect yourself then you're not you haven't healed it whereas you can say you've healed your deepest root trauma when you feel like you know what I don't need any more boundaries my preciousness my pure essence my beingness is enough it protects me which can seem like a contradiction but when you are so in tune, in touch, and owning of just who you are, and, and by that I mean your preciousness, yes, you know, people, some people may still take advantage of that, or certain situations may happen. But once you've healed your deepest trauma, I don't know, it, it almost feels like something, your love is all the protection that you need like your true love your love for yourself for your truest self is all the protection that you need so this is just a little by you know kind of like a, a a note on the side like that's how i experienced it but i want to go back to you know so why am i seeing a lot of people that are being re have been re-traumatized a lot of us through the current world affairs and so then we re-experience, um, you know, what we thought we had completed with and dealt with, which can be, you know, anything from residue of Lyme, you know, the various co-infections, viruses, dormant viruses, parasites, whatever it is. And that that is always related to needing to heal another round of deepest root trauma. But then also, and, and how, you know, those two need to go together. Like you can't just go and heal the body and leave the emotions by the wayside because 
as I explained with the constipation example, when your body is not feeling completely safe and that necessitates for all your chakras to be at least kind of healthily present and you know sounds fluffy like spinning in the right direction but as in they need to be not locked because when they're when they're locked and suppressed that's where the trauma is present that's where you can't be fully present and fully ready to heal your body because the body's still locked the body heals itself when we give it the right um, environment and support but most importantly when we give it the safety that it needs and so what I see happening a lot is you know and, and, and it's normal I mean I've been through that journey as well right where it's like we just want to quickly heal and we think that by you know whether it's like what I did you know I did seven rounds of 40 days of fasting 18 hours dry every day six hour window of drinking you know I was rigorous I went all in and in between you know mostly fruit a little bit of greens like I was super hardcore and rigorous because I thought well if I do all of that I'm just gonna heal it all and yes you know did I heal a lot and and more than I could have healed with any other method absolutely like absolutely no doubt and what's also true is there was more because detox was just one part of the equation fasting is just one part of the equation fruit fasting raw veganism is just one part of the equation there's a lot of a lot of people that i'm currently working with they're they're too weakened from their toxicity from their degeneration due to toxicity and due to emotional stressors running their body down because you know yes biofilm viruses parasites heavy metal toxicity all of that is hectic for the body no doubt but you know what is even more hectic for the body is your own emotional attacks that you give to your body and you know we all know what we're talking about right the negative self-talk the judgment the hatred the self-loathing you know all of that um, and oftentimes we can't you know again because we've normalized it we don't quite understand just how deeply damaging it actually is until you know until we do I'm trying to think like what gave me the switch well it took many years took many years you know and then and I look back and I realize wow I was so 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 self-abusive for so many years so hard on myself in all kinds of ways you know and I simply thought I thought that I was just a strong woman in her healthy not healthy masculine I just thought I was a go-getter I you know so I I I made it positive I I sold it to myself as something positive but actually it wasn't and that negative self-talk that way of speaking to yourself is really really hectic on the body because you know if anything creates free radicals and premature aging and you know just as acidosis in the body it's that it's the way that you relate to yourself you know in your intimacy when nobody's there when nobody's listening when nobody's looking because you know we're, we we can all be good 
at being kind to ourselves, at self-love when we're with others, you know? So we can go to the yoga class and we can make it look like, oh, you know, self-love, self-care. But then we go home and, you know, we are with ourselves, with our thoughts. H how are we with ourselves then? And, you know, again, I can only speak for myself. It took me many, 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 many years and many rounds of trial and error where I thought I had it and then it's like, oh no, I don't have it. Um, to come to a level where, you know, and I'm still learning, like every day it's a learning. Now it's a lot easier, but you know, I would say really learning to love myself was one of the hardest things that I ever had to learn. And I knew, I knew when it was just like, well, that's all that's left to learn. You know, you've done all the other cool extreme things and yeah, great, you know, you got the golden stars for that and well done. But now, we, now it's like, you know, are we gonna learn to love ourselves for real or not? And that point will come where no supplement, no fast, no nothing is gonna pull you out of that. Only your truest, deepest self-love and kindness. And so to me, self-love, trauma healing must be at the basis of any kind of healing. And, you know, of course, the more chronic or the more severe the disease, the truer this is. But then again, like I said, you know, as with the example of constipation, we can, you know, even something seemingly simple, which it's not, but even something seemingly simple like constipation can take us years to figure out why, because we're not addressing the emotional component. And so for those of you listening or watching later, you know, maybe sitting with this thing of like, oh my gosh, I've tried everything to heal this thing, whatever it is, whether it's something complex or seemingly simple, and you go, I just haven't figured it out. It's emotional, it's emotional. And yes, that is one of the hardest things to address, especially to fully address. On the other hand, and I just did a post on that, um, you know, detox, which of course has been, you know, the buzzword, whatever, in the last, I don't know, three, four, five years. But detox is just one component of healing. And what I see so often is that you know, we get one component right, but then there's all the other components. And so an important component for, I would say most people that are getting, you know, that are just beginning their journey now, a lot of you, a lot of you are, are too weak, too degenerate to truly detox from the get go. And so it's really important to actually first regenerate, you know, obviously like, look, well, where's the body the weakest, you know, and then where does regeneration need to happen? Most often the nervous system, you know, because of years of being sick and self-loathing and not figuring it out and, you know, all the knock-on effects. One of the first things usually is actually the nervous system, which is connected to your digestive system, which is connected to your colon. So yes, of course, we need to clean out the colon, we need to address the detox pathways, absolutely. But, you know, thank you, seeing it everywhere, wondering, is a pyramid scheme. Um, yes, well, it's not a pyramid scheme, actually. It is an MLM, absolutely. And, you know, and I've spoken about this before. Um, I was never into MLMs, I've tried a couple, and as much as I, I always liked the products that I was promoting, I didn't like the business side of multi-level marketing. And I'm just gonna, you know, I, I picked up this comment and I'll, I'll comment to it and then I'll go back to what I was saying. Because um, it is important and I do feel there's a lot of stigma still, just like I had around multi-level marketing. So first of all, with Black Oxygen, with Boo, 
the product is faultless, you know, and the thousands of testimonials out there, even just, you know, maybe by now I have a hundred myself, amazing. And so I can't fault the product. It's just faultless. And it's not that, you know, I always like to say, it's not that the company did a great job. The company that is selling black oxygen, which by the way, they've been selling for at least 30 years, just not as black oxygen. Uh, they've been, it, it's natural, you know, so it's not like they did something. The only right thing they did is that they happened to own the land where they get black oxygen from. So, you know, it's not that they do something to make it wonderful. Nature made it incredibly powerful. For me, the most powerful fulvic and mineral acid that I have found and I've spoken about, you know, what is it good for? So it's, it's one of those foundational products. Um, it's not a pyramid scheme, even though it is a multi-level marketing company. And in fact, just the other day, my husband and I were discussing this and we were saying, actually, it's the best multi-level marketing company we've seen to date. Certainly not because of their customer service, you know, which is terrible for now. And, and all of that, but rather because you don't have to pull in other people to make money. You can profit simply by sharing the product. And, you know, personally, because of my bad experience with other multi-level marketing companies, um, again, not because the products were bad, the products were good in both cases, and I still like them and I still use them, but I didn't like the business model because I don't have time to think about that. You know, for me, it's like if something is easy and I can just share it, I do it because I do like sharing things that work. And if on top of it, we can make money from it. Great. I encourage all of you to do the same. But if it's something that's going to be complicated, that's going to force me to, you know, try and pull in people, I don't have time for it and I'm, it, I'm just not going to do it. And that was the problem with the other two companies. Whereas with this, I didn't set out to build in any kind of way. I just set out to share the product because whenever I find something that truly works, you know, I spread the word. And, and then people started coming to me and going, wow, this product is amazing, can we sign up? And before I knew it, I had to say to my husband, well, because I'm not good with that stuff. And so I said to him, look, do you want to put a little bit of effort into this and help people grow their business and also most importantly use it correctly and recommend it correctly and he was like sure let's do it and so you know that's how the whole boo black oxygen and yes the reason why a lot of people why it's everywhere now is because it truly is amazing it took me probably I think at least a year, maybe longer before I tried it because some of my colleagues, they were like, you have to try this stuff. And because it was an MLM, I was like, I'm not even interested. And I had other fulvic products that I thought were really good. So I didn't see the need to try it. And then finally a dear friend of mine who is super choosy uh, and also a detox expert, she was like, you have to try this. So I caved in, tried it, and that was that. So Boo, as others, and I'm, I'm compiling a, a protocol or, or a, a document, you know, where I'm going to outline, like, what are the basic things that basically everybody needs and everybody can start on so that, you know, whether you don't have money for coaching, whether you don't want to coach, whether, you know, whatever, those are the foundation. Maybe you're not ready but you want to get started, you know, then there are some foundational products that I feel everybody should be on at least for six months. Some of them forever or, you know, for longer, but at least for six months. And then once you have those foundations in place, then for example, okay, you know, go, I, now I need to do the next level of work and then seek out a coach, a practitioner, or whatever. Um, where was I? So yeah, 
to circle it back you know like what am what am i seeing i'm seeing a lot of people not healing trying everything most of the time stabbing in the dark you know and sometimes like the, the one woman on the phone with me she showed me her table of supplements and she was like look alex i'm taking all these things but i could see you know if, if you don't take them in the correct with the correct steps like it's not good enough to do oh well you know i'm taking this and i'm taking that and i read that this is good for that and that's good for that and i'm just taking it you know with some things you can be lucky but with other things especially when we're talking heavy metal detox you can create a disaster in your body especially when you've got a lot of heavy metals and you know you start mobilizing through the heavy metal detox smoothie or you know some chlorella spirulina whatever and and your pathways aren't opened um that you're still you know kind of on a, on a diet that doesn't promote detox you can create complete havoc in your body and the trouble then is that then a lot of people blame the detox smoothie blame the fruit blame the fast you know or the natural ways and that's never the case you know fruit is never the problem even though sometimes it's not appropriate or it's not appropriate anymore or it's not appropriate for some time you know and and that's been one of my biggest learnings um, certainly in the last two years to really come away from any kind of dogmatic approach and dogmatic thinking and to just see that everybody not that everybody is different everybody is at a different stage of their detox journey uh, oh yeah, how to heal the nervous system. What are those things? It's good to take for six months at least. I'm, I'm saying uh, boo, black oxygen is one of those things. I'm, go, I'm creating a document where I'm outlining, you know, like what are some of the basic that you should be using? You know, on the other hand, you know, talking about boo, because um, basically, you know what's happened with boo is that a comp competitor got you know essentially jealous angry whatever because boo's been performing so well and so you know clearly competition's fearful so they started you know putting out a lot of crap about the company and and you see this is where truth can be twisted because is it true that some people have experienced negative things with boo? Sure. If we want to word it like that, yes. You know. In fact, one of my clients and friends, she took boo. Uh, in fact, she only had a foot bath. And it's not the first person that I hear this say. She only had a foot bath, did a quarter or an eighth of a teaspoon whatever it was and two days later she had a fever and just felt really really weak for two days um, you know so much so that she was a little bit worried and messaged me and so forth um, is boo bad was it boo's fault no boo is simply a really powerful humic and fulvic mineral with most of the mineral minerals that we need plus amino acids and herbs so it's like it's a really complex formula is it harmful no can it create these strong detox reactions yes it can and so then when people don't know what's happening obviously you know in this case my friend she knew she contacted me like it was all good but when people just start out on this journey and maybe they have no idea, they've never done any detox whatsoever, some people, you know, pass parasites, even just from a, from a foot bath. I understand how scary that can be or how scary it can be to get a fever. But, and, and so my point is, you know, some people then have gone and reported black oxygen to the FDA because they read about these kind of, you know, reactions going like, 
oh my god you know it's unsafe well so boo is unsafe and many other things that have already been taken off the market because they're so effective so then we want to make boo and the likes unsafe but going to eat a mcdonald's and kentucky fried chicken and you know all of these things or taking a whole bunch of medication that's out there that is damaging for real that's that's okay you know we we just leave that so this is where as consumers we really need to wake up and we need to start to see what is going on there but also we need to be aware of our own interpretations because you know a, a, another example and i do i empathize i greatly empathize with people that are just starting out who come from you know the traditional i want to say the traditional alternative health model or the traditional slightly alternative health model meaning their mind is a little bit more open than you know those that come from a strictly medical science model but even those people when they begin to detox i've had clients where when they begin to detox and they start feeling for the first time in eons their body their physical movements it's the scariest thing because they've been numb for 15 20 years and they've just been operating on stimulants wine coffee cheese um oil fat you know stimulation stimu stimulation sedation stimulation sedation so they're not even in touch with life anymore yeah but then when life begins to circulate when some electricity and aliveness which is the same thing electricity aliveness begins to circulate again in their body it's like oh my god what's happening well welcome to life your body is beginning to come alive again now what happens when something that has been asleep or dead for a very long time comes alive again what happens can you think about that can you imagine it hurts it hurts when something that's been asleep for a long time becomes alive again it's painful because to be dead to have something flatline it's it's dead you know there's deadness but when it comes alive whatever's there that wasn't working especially if it's been for years it's gonna hurt and so that is the biggest excuse my language mind fuck for a lot of us and but when we get it when we get it it's so humbling because we realize wow yes you know for the most part we've been living like zombies we've been living like zombies and it's not derogatory there's no judgment it's like but can we just can we just like own it can we just go yeah wow because otherwise if that wouldn't be the truth we wouldn't be living in the reality that we are currently living and i don't know about you but when the shit started going down you know i was like okay hang on i knew and i have truly known certainly for the last 17 years since i had my kind of first proper teacher i knew that it was only going to be a matter of time until something like what's currently happening would happen obviously i didn't know what it was going to look like you know i i didn't know um but i knew that something was going to happen i knew that we were we were going to you know the shit was going to hit the fan but when it did as much as i was like okay sure yeah you know i knew it was going to happen when it did there was also part of me that was just like 
really and the more it happened because of course the first few months you know we all thought but the more it was happening the more i was like wow this wow 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 this bad sure when is it enough you know really when is it enough so you know when is it enough when you coach people yes is that you guiding them through detox well i mean my work is really you know what is it sometimes i even it's like what do i do sure strictly speaking yes i guide them through detox and through healing and regenerating their body but um it's so much more than that you know and again because yes i've, I've detoxed but then detox is just one piece then there comes regeneration um the emotional healing part, the well, psycho-emotional, psycho-spiritual part. And I do think, uh, you know, for the most part, unless, like only once we're kind of in the journey, does it all make sense? And we go, oh yeah, wow, right, you know? And I, I'm still mesmerized every single, like for me, this, this whole journey has been, you know, like I used, to, I used to be in fashion and I used to be so excited about finding, you know, the coolest stores around the world or the coolest brands that nobody knew yet that were, you know, all handmade and just like amazing stuff. Like I just geeked out on that in my fashion days. Now I completely geek out when I find, you know, new products and new ways of putting things together, new truths, like, and it just, it doesn't, the fascination doesn't end because it is so incredibly fascinating. And yes, detoxing has changed your whole life. Absolutely. So there is, you know, and, but again, you know, detox is only one part. And what I see is so many get stuck in the detox part you know and it's the same thing with everything it's like when we find you know when i initially in my 20s when i found ayurveda and i studied yoga in india for me it was like i have arrived yoga the combination of yoga and ayurveda this is it i don't need to know anything else like this is it but then you know there was more and i evolved and something else called me and you know and the journey just went on and on and on and it's still going on and on and so similarly when i was detoxing um you know for several years deeply super strictly super intensely i thought wow this is it uh, you know but then there was more and and again, these things, you know, I would say from, from what I'm seeing, what I've witnessed, there's not a lot of people that have gone the full journey. And that's why we don't really know about it. You know, there's people who have detoxed um, on a more biofunctional level, but without going deep into fasting and stripping the body and that's one kind of detox then there's a kind of detox where you really go deep into fasting and stripping the body through fasting and herbs and dry fasting and fruit fasting and all that but that's not a lifestyle it's not you know um so a lot of these these ways that were shown it's not a lifestyle like your tools just like tantra or you know of course i mean not the traditional original but like neo tantra it's not a lifestyle it's a tool but then we become we get trapped into creating an identity of our tools like i'm you know a fasting person i'm a tantrika i'm a yogi i'm no you are you who did you come here to be what is your karma what is your dharma who do you want to be 
you know that's oftentimes also and that's a whole rabbit hole in itself because oftentimes like we so desperately want to be a raw vegan a fasting person you know a multi-orgasmic woman that can sleep with any man is that you is that serving your soul and even more is it serving your destiny or is it serving your ego you know and at some point it's like none of this is bad it's just that at some point we have to face all of that and as my dear friend and colleague um, David Fastigi says you know we need to start to tell the truth to, about ourselves to ourselves at some point we need to tell the truth to ourselves about ourselves and it's not easy you know it really isn't easy because we've been so again by the new age and self-development movement we have been taught and indoctrinated to create another positive persona a positive spiritual persona out there and sure we do some shadow work but ultimately we feed the positive persona but that's also not real you know it's not real and and now more than ever that stuff is like on the way out it's on the way out it's about time to just be 100% real with where you're at in your body, in your health, in your journey towards your destiny, and with what are your desires? How do you truly, really want to live? Not because you bought into another vision and idea, but what does your nervous system say? What's the story of your nervous system? Because your nervous system will tell you if you're on track or not. So in closing, you know, how do we heal our nervous system? Our nervous system, you know, it's such a delicate, but if, if we really want to do the real work, like the nervous system is our barometer and thermometer, you know, it kind of like, it tells us what's up. And well, how do we heal the nervous system? It's, it's a, it can be a big process, you know? So again, there isn't a one, there isn't one answer. I mean, ultimately the healing the nervous system is a process where we slowly unwind because just as, you know, we became who we had to become, in order to protect our preciousness in the environment that we grew up in. And so first we need to become aware of all the layers. Like, okay, wow, you know, there was trauma at six months. Then there was something that, you know, really impacted us at the age of two. Then there was something else at the age of three. Then there was something at the age of five. Then there was something else at the age of 10 and 11 and 12. You know all these little so we piece it together and oftentimes because we had to cope we're not gonna you know when we tell the story of what happened it's like yeah that thing happened that thing happened each piece needs to be unpacked even the things we go yeah that thing happened but you know it really wasn't a big deal it wasn't a big deal at all i kind of you know digested it like uh hang on, let's go and really unpack that thing. Because typically, those things that we have normalized the most, that's where there is the most to unpack. And, you know, it's not easy because you're going to have the ego that says, hell no. And you're going to have the frozen part that go, I don't even know what to do with this. So... It, it's work that needs to happen slowly, gently, delicately. 
Um, and then once we, you know, really see like what is, what is in front of us, and then we need to go and look, well, where in our adult life are we feeling held back or what puts us into freeze, fight, flight, fawn, right? What are the circumstances that make us experience that? Basically kind of little re-traumatized, re-traumatizations. Um, and then we just unpack, you know, we begin the unpacking and just by having the readiness and the willingness to heal the nervous system, life will teach us, life will show us, life will bring us the right people. Um, but as a pointer, you know, I would say for most of us, yeah, we're either in in positive mind and stimulate stimulation, constantly looking for stimulation, which, you know, we can also get stimulation from seemingly healthy things. Like it doesn't always have to be coffee or alcohol or, you know, it can, it can even be, well, I'm, I just love going to ecstatic dances all the time and drinking cacao and you know it's it's this reaching out there i just love being with people all the time and stimulation 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 not being able to just be it's the hardest thing for most people hardest thing they'll you know they'd rather climb 10 mountains than be two days in stillness with themselves not following a protocol just you know can you be still and in flow with yourself that's where the trauma patterns will come up and instead of then spiritualizing them away we need to just be with them you know so it's that part of well can you tell the truth about yourself to yourself because then we can start healing it. It's not even healing, integrating. Because healing, you know, almost like, it, it's as if like, oh, then it's gonna go away. No. So as an example, you know, what I noticed is that as much as, yes, it's true, I am, you know, a strong woman, whatever that even means, you know, like I'm feisty, I go for it. And you know, like all those things, yes, true. And what's equally true, oh, I got two minutes left. Um, this was supposed to be a quick one. Anyway, so what's equally true is that I, I, you know, I began to notice a while ago, oh, when my husband's not around, when he goes away for a couple of days, I kind of go into a daze, you know. Uh, used to i mean you know things have shifted but i i noticed how i was like oh my god when he's not there i'm just lost and that was because when he would leave i would find myself confronted with the little ones within me that were still traumatized and then this is where you know a lot of the spiritual movement would go oh well you know you just need to learn to just be by yourself no we come together to heal. We come together to heal our deepest wounds. And you know, it doesn't matter, it doesn't mean that just because you still have some wounds that are being healed, that therefore, you know, you're unevolved or no, we all have our stuff, but we need to be truthful about it, you know, and we need to then be able to ask for support, ask for help. Like we didn't come here to be all powerful and strong by ourselves, no. It's okay to need people. And it's okay, you know, to do better with certain people than with others. 
that that's part of you know telling the truth about yourself to yourself and to others okay and there's my timer